So today we're going to be getting all businessy, Lord business. And we'll be talking about Liebig's law of the minimum. I think it's Liebig or Liebig or I like Liebig just because it's kind of relevant to what we're talking about. The law of the minimum, or it's also known as Liebig's law or law of minimum, it was established like in early 1800s, 1820 something. The law was originally created for agriculture uh, of all things. And it basically said, your crops will only perform as good as the least scarce resource. I water it. I mean, I, I, I have, it's important that I did not give this plan. You know, to put it in another perspective, let's say you're stranded on a deserted island and you have a ship full of MREs. You think you're safe, right? Well, there's no fresh water anymore, anywhere. So, so you think you'll be fine because you got all this food, but there's no fresh water anywhere. Uh, you're surrounded by seawater. You can't drink that. You're going to last like eight to ten days and you're going to die with all this food, but you just are not going to make it. So most scarce resource being water. This law can also be applied to pretty much anything, any kind of business venture or any establishment or anything that you actually ever do. Let's say, for example, uh, there's a restaurant, a really nice restaurant, and uh, you take your wife there and you propose to her. And it's an amazing experience. And every year, year after year every anniversary you go there and you sit in the exact same table you get your picture taken and you just rekindle the moment that you propose to your wife well let's say eventually they get bought up by a mega company and the mega company comes in and thinks gee let's make it like everything else and they change how their business functions let's say they do away with the menu cart they don't do it anymore let's say that they no longer play sinatra and classy music and instead opt to play techno music at full volume so you can't even talk to your wife anymore you know the food might be amazing the drinks might be great but what if your waitress really sucks it's just going to ruin that opportunity everything else may have been great but bad music and a bad waitress when you're paying 300 dollars for dinner it's just it's just going to ruin the experience for you you may write them and let them know how terrible that the experience was. They may send you a gift card with infinity money on it saying your next dinner is on us. Please come back. We will pay for it. But they just lost the magic and it's just not worth going back because those two things ruined it for you. So it's the same thing. Liebig's law can be applied to pretty much any scenario where you want a product or a service or something and one person, one player will ruin it for you. It's like the weakest link of a chain. You know, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Same law, except Liebig's law has a little bit more dynamic when you look at it that way. So to apply Liebig's law to a business setting, let's say Liebig's barrel, which is the way that he used to explain his law. Let's say we, we look at that from a business approach. So this isn't the barrel, but this bucket will represent your organization. And branded across the side here are all the different parts of your organization. The fill line that runs along the edge here, that represents the promise that your organization makes, whether it's the products that you're producing, the services you're providing, or the experience that your guests are getting is all represented by the fill line. So if somebody goes to your website to do some research about your company, they're going to be told that this fill line is what they're going to get from you. The services, their experience, or the products they're buying from you are being represented by this fill line. If somebody comes to you, they're going to get this great of an experience every single time. Now, if your organization operates as promised and always meets this expectation and always meets the promises that they make, the clients are always happy. Employees are always happy. Leadership's always happy. Solid business growth. There's growth, growth opportunities for everybody. People get raises. People take vacations. People get to go home at the time they're supposed to. Everything is wonderful. Unfortunately, in most real world businesses, the reality of their bucket is more like this. Not every part of your organization is working to the expectation or the standard that you've set. Your fill line is here, but perhaps some departments are not working as effectively or efficiently as they're supposed to. Maybe there's issues there. Maybe it's your recruiting department. Maybe it's your marketing department, your sales department. Maybe it's operations or maybe your training team just isn't as good as it's supposed to be. So what happens when a guest or a customer or someone comes to you to contract your services? You promise them this fill line. This is what you're gonna get from us every single time, but then you deliver a situation like this.
So to put it in perspective, you may have some parts of your organization or people that are working extremely hard. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. However, other players in your organization or other teams are just not meeting expectation. Therefore, your products or your services are falling short of the client's expectations. So the spillage that's coming out of the barrel, that represents your hard work, your sweat, the long nights that you're spending trying to get things done, missing your kid's dance recital again. Inefficiencies like this cause you to have to work extremely hard to try to just make up the difference. Or here, this guy might be bragging about how awesome his team is or how amazing he is and how hard he works and how well he, he produces things, but what good is it if the rest of the organization is hemorrhaging money, losing sales, and losing opportunities? It's like the Titanic's going down. What's the point? So in conclusion, do yourself a favor in your organization and ask yourself, are you an effective team? No. We are not an effective team. And if not, here comes the consultants to come in and tell you what you're doing wrong. Instead, stop working in silos. What makes these guys work so well as a team? Why do these guys succeed? What is it that they're doing correctly? On the flip side, why do these guys suck? What are they doing wrong? Is there issues with leadership or resources, or maybe it's not the right talent? What you need to do as an, or as an operator, what you need to do as an operator or a leader is to bridge these gaps. Work with team building exercises. Maybe trade places. Take some of these guys and trade places with these guys for a day. Maybe these guys can spot what these guys might be doing wrong and spot opportunities. Maybe these guys will see what it's like to work on a great team and take some of those learnings back to their own team. Identify opportunities and on top of everything, listen to feedback from your employees and teams. Maybe they need more resources. Maybe they need more funding. Maybe they need better talent. Maybe they need to be challenged more. Figure out what it is that's causing this issue and help them to bridge that. Bottom line is, identify the issue and get better. Good luck. Perfect.